as you probably know, a lot of people know I'm Steve Ross and I'm the, uh, I maintain the real time trees that, you know, when Sebastian and Thomas are done with one and they work on to the next uh, one, I go and I uh, <clears throat> take over the, uh, is this thing on? Nope. Yeah. So right now I'm currently maintaining um, 3.2 uh, RTE, that goes on to May 2018. Uh, ben Hutchings, who is the maintainer of the Debian, um, uh, Debian kernel, asked me if, I, you know, if, they, if he maintained a 3.2 kernel, would I maintain it as well? And I said, um, sure, as long as, you know, I'll, as long as you do it, I'll do it. I didn't expect him to do it for years. <laughs> but I'm keeping up with my promise. Uh, it's, actually not, it's actually one of the easiest ones to maintain because it has the fewest things I actually backport to it. So if something doesn't backport well, or if it doesn't apply, I just don't uh, bother with it. But that's actually going on, last I look, is going on until May 2018. Uh, 3.4 looks like I believe it's done. Uh, I ported, backported stuff to it, and then I looked at the end of life and realized it was already over. So actually, it got updated, even though Stable stopped maintaining it. I maintained it, but I think I'm done with 3.4. Uh, 3.10 is still going on until uh, supposedly October. 3.12, 3.14, I believe it's just ended as well. Um, I think I backported as well that, although it says it's done in October 2017. Let's see, if there's no more releases, I'm not going to be backporting it. Uh, 3.18 still going on until January. Um, and then right now we got 4.1 and I believe 4.2 or 4.4 4 is the long term, uh, latest long term kernel release, which is supposedly going to 2018. 4.6 uh, I'm not going to support, as Thomas already said. Um, there's no support for it mainline, so I'm not going to bother supporting it. Um, 3.8 or 4.8, if they start working on 4.8 and switch to 4.9, I'm not supporting 4.8 either. So uh, when 4.9 uh, becomes, if it becomes a long-term kernel and they decide to go to uh, you know, 4.11, um, I'll maintain 4.9 until it's, well, it's done. Uh, I have a lot of scripts to do the maintenance. I posted a link right there. Um, I copied everything over. This isn't my main repository. I kind of modified things. Um, <coughs> to throw where my uh, really nasty scripts are. Basically, when I found out that I was doing something over and over again, I'm like, this could be scripted. So I just wrote a quick bash script and uh, did that. And I'm going to go through real quick what I do for each release. Uh, this is for every single thing. So if I do this for 4.4, I do this for 4.1, I do this for 3.18, all of them. Uh, first thing I do, um, I have a cron job every night that will um, do a git remote update on my rep repository to pull down Linus's tree and the stable tree. So in the morning or something like that, or when I eventually get around to working on stable, and you know, I, uh, I'll decide to do a git tag grep, like right now, for example, I'm just saying 4.4. So I do a git tag grep v4.4. It has my, also it has my tags in there. So I see where I'm, okay, oh, they added two more releases, because Greg adds one every week. So if I missed two weeks or three weeks, I have to do three or four of them. So first thing I do is I do, I edit the local version RT to update the version of the RT file because every time, if it's going from like 3.4, like 19 to 3.4.20, even though it might be 20, 21, 22, I will make a dash RT tag for each one, even though I'm not even going to go through the testing. So actually, if I'm three, uh, if I'm behind by three, I will merge the first one, fix any conflicts. If there's conflicts, then I kind of do a little small, quick run, let's see if it builds and boots. Um, if there's no conflicts, I just basically push it down to, I have this little script that I use. I do a commit release, which will actually uh, do the, actually get checkout commit and even put the Linux tag in there. So I don't have to worry about typing Linux, the version or something like that. The commit release will actually do that for me. Uh, and then I just type push this branch because um, the machine that I worked on, do this on is not the machine that connects to kernel.org. So I have to push it off to my kernel.org side or the machine that I talk to. So I just say push this branch. It looks at the branch I'm at, knows where it goes, and pushes it. Um, then when I go to that main machine, I will write tag, R I'll, I'll pull that in and I'll say tag RT, and it looks at the log files and it parses the log files and says, oh, do you want this tag? I'm like, yes, do it. So I don't type anything other than tag RT. And then I'll do, to get merged to you know, x plus one. Then I edit the version file again for the next one. And now here's where I start. Well, it's once I get to the final, like so I'm equal to what stable has, I'll run a k-test. Who here is not familiar with k-test? A um, few people. k-test actually lives in the kernel code. It's in the kernel proper. It's under tools, testing, 
uh, K-Test. In fact, actually, K-Test is what created the tools testing directory in the first place. Um, it's a script that's allowed, it will do build, boot, and uh, it'll build your machine, or build your kernel, uh, boot the or install the kernel, and boot the kernel on your machine, make sure you can even have it run tests for you. Uh, it's completely config. There's lots of examples, uh, config files down in, that, in there. Uh, the config files here are actually on that link that I have, so if you want to look what I do. Um, this is where, like I said, I tell people I, I read Facebook more because I'll be working on code, and then I'll st stop, and I'll just say, okay, k-test, and then go read Facebook while the t it does everything, and then like, oh, k-test is done. I'll go back and work. Um, <clears throat> then I, uh, what I try to do for at least 4.4, the major, the closest ones, I try to make sure it works cross-compiles, so I have a k-test cross-compile, which will actually go through and make sure it will do a make def config plus it will add the uh, config, pre config preempt RT full to it. Um, and it will boot all these architectures. If the architecture doesn't support config preempt RT, usually it will, it won't, uh, that config will just be unset by the, the make one, because it will do a make old config with the settings. And then it will just make sure that nothing get, got broken uh, in the meantime. Uh, a lot of times this takes a long time to run. This is why I was like hope to have some extra you know, machine power because sometimes I skip this step and every time I skip this step someone complains, hey, you know, you, power, your last stable broke PowerPC. I'm like, damn it. Um, so then I run uh, K-Test on my test box which actually compiles and boots to my test box. And what I do there now is that's where I, I SSH to that test box and I'll, I think I stayed on this next one. Um, I'll run cyclic test, and then um, actually I make a screen file. I put run cyclic test with these options. Then I'll do another screen. I'll do hackbench, and another screen I'll do or uh, disk cc uh, j20 kernel build in a loop. In fact, actually, that's a script too. I didn't add that one. It actually just says run stress, and it does the hackbench and the disk cc, which is equivalent to basically what RT eval does as well. Uh, the only difference is RT eval just does a kernel build. I actually do a distributed, a distributed kernel build, so it's actually pounding at the uh, network as well. Uh, then I go back to my other box and I'll type, you know, ktest and uh, ctest.conf, which um, will run on another box. It's going to build, boot, um, six, config, six different configs, which it does all the options. It does no preempt, um, uh, no preempt, preempt. Uh, pre uh, what's called lazy a volunteer preempt, preempt, and it, it hits six different options, different six different configs. I want mean, to make sure that the kernel still boots and works on each of those configs. And one of them is like even a debug config. So um, to make sure they work on i386, because a lot of times things will break on i386 and 32-bit or 64-bit. So it, built, it runs six configs on the, um, and boots a kernel with an i386 environment and i386 uh, environment, and then it does six. Uh, exact same type of um, features for a 64-bit environment for Intel. Uh, when all the tests are finally done, oh, I think I, I even put in there that one of the configs is it does a make all mod config. Another time that it takes about 35 minutes to run the make all mod config. So um, you have I, a slow machine. Yeah, two minutes. Yeah. What? Yes. Thirty. Yes, two minutes. Two yeah. minutes to do a make all mod config. Yeah. Wow. I need yeah. I need the power. Uh, I guess and this is a distributed CC stuff, you know, on I it's, it's it three boxes. Yeah. Well, I don't have these uh, super boxes that you guys have. Um, and I don't have SSDs on all my boxes, only some of them. <laughs> yeah, but so it takes me about 35 minutes to run the, uh, the make all mod config. So I've skipped that step. And usually when I skip that step, um, I get complaints that, you know, one of my stables broke make all mod config. <laughs> it's like sorry, every time I skip a step, it's almost a guaranteed it's my break. So I try to add this. Now, remember, I'm doing this on every single release that I do uh, or try to. Um, make sure this is <clears throat> so when all the tests are all done, I'll go back and I'll go and I'll kill the compile, I'll kill the uh, hack bench, and I'll go um, kill cyclic tests and say, see what the results are. It shows me the results. I expect my machines are slow, so my machine usually are about 40 microsecond latencies. It is about 40, 45 is the max latency, and that's what I expect to always be. If it, if it shoots up, there's been a time where I screwed up a merge, and it gave me you know, a few hundred microsecond latencies, and I'm like, oh, wait, this is, this is new. And, um, and I looked in and said, oh, I screwed this up and fixed it. So I try to make sure it still, everything works. Um, then I will, on that same box, I'll run my rtmigrate-test-c, which um, will give a pass-fail, make sure it works, so the migration still works. Um, 
I have a uh, mutex test and a mutex hammer um, that is kind of like the PI stress tests that you guys have. I had my I wrote these before those existed. So uh, do they do different things, or do they? Uh, much the well, the PI mutex test basically does all to make sure PI works. It do, it goes in and um, makes it does. I forgot exactly how I did it. I, this was a while ago. I wrote it where I made it so it actually uh, run, does a inverse uh, priority. So if it doesn't work, you'll you'll get the thing will never stop. It just you run it and it'll just go forever. Yeah. So I want to make sure that the that's. PI stress does as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what. It, it boosts to three priorities. Yeah. I think that's what my mutex one does. It just basically randomly does it. The first, uh, the PI mutex test is a very short one. It does it in different ways. Uh, there's a few example of ways that different tries it, but it just, it, it basically hard, it uses barriers to make sure it forces the uh, ordering, that it will, like, it will actually hit the rate or the problem if PI is not working. So it's not like just randomly, you know, trying different orders. It actually sets up an environment that it will fail if PI is not working properly. Uh, the mutex hammer one is kind of like that. It just sets three things and just hammers things like crazy. So if it eventually fails, it'll do it. But that just, that just runs crazy. And then I have my uh, CPU crash script I run, um, which is stress CPU hot plug. Uh, when I first gave that to Karsten, um, he basically said, you know, you should have told me I should have pulled out the fire extinguisher. Uh, it took out every one of his boxes. Um, it's basically takes, it's a CPU hot plug, basically it does a binary shutdown of, of your CPUs. Uh, first it will shut down the CPU zero, if it, or if it's CPU zero is not available, it'll be CPU one. It'll start, do CPU one, and then it'll do CPU two. Then it does CPU one and two. And then it does CPU one and three, you know, and does it binary all the way up in, the, in a fast loop. And by the way, 4.4 basically could crash. I do, a, I do run this um, five times. In fact, I had to short it down to five because it would ki if I did it longer, if I ran it in the loop longer, pretty much it kills every box still. Um, <laughs> so CPU hot plug is broken. There's bugs in there um, because if I stress this too long. But I just want to make sure it works. I almost stopped doing this on 4.4. 4.4 barely can make it through at once. Sometimes it makes it all five. But for some reason, something changed in 4.4 that was just made things really not work very well. Did that okay. Get did that get better later? Was it fixed or? Did what four four? Did it get better? Yeah. Um, actually, last time it did, it ran fine, so maybe it has. I haven't had it lock up, but uh, it was recently it locked up. So I mean, I could easily just run this, that, do a seek five, run it five times, and see if it survives. On this is only four CPUs, <laughs> so <laughs> it's not even like it's got a lot of CPUs. So it runs through all the combinations real quick. Um, then when I'm all done and I'm happy with it, you know, I'll do the, I'll update the version thing, run my commit and push the branch again. And then I do the tag RT, which does the special tag uh, for the tag. And then I do a push branch. On my main machine, I have a separate script called push branch. So I actually have to put a, I say, and I have another script called this branch, which will tell me which branch I'm on. And it will push my branch up to kernel.org. Uh, I have a script called make RT. What it does, it basically creates the, um, it makes the uh, prologue that you see. This, the, it'll make a nice little prologue of what will be, well, be pushed out. And the make patches is what makes the tar, or makes most of the patches from real time from the git trees. And it'll put it into a temp directory for me. And then I check out a rebase um, uh, branch. Uh, where I run, um, well, I do a git rebase of the dot four one, find out whatever errors, examine the, make sure I, I have the right uh, branch that I'm committing to, and then I kick that off. Um, if there's conflicts, I'll go and fix them. And usually, uh, the only time there's conflicts is if, if there was merge conflicts in the first place. If there's um, merge conflicts, I know that the rebase is going to have conflicts too. So I just try to remember what I did to fix the merge um, conflicts. I'll mix these conflicts. Um, then after I get down to the, bo the bottom, the local, the local version always <coughs> conflicts because that's the one thing I don't save. So I modify with that, um, commit it. I have another tag, RT rebase, which does the rebase tag. And then I push that one up, forcing, I have to do the dash F because rebase is a rebase. It doesn't, it's not, um, I have to add the dash F there. And I also add the tag, so now my tags go up there to kernel.org. And I run another script called make tarball, which uses the rebase to create the, patch, the patches tarball for everyone. 
Then I go up over into my special uh, directory that has everything, that has what's up on kernel.org. I move my patches down to the older, and I move the temp patches, that, or the, the patches that were created in the temp back into um, my, uh, the directory there. And then I run a script called move old patches, which goes up to kernel.org, moves all the patches that was in the directory into the older directory. So if you ever go to on kernel.org and look at the stuff, it'll move there. I have a script called sign patches, which will actually use the GP, uh, GPT signatures to sign everything, sign all the tarballs. Um, because there's a, to push something up to kernel.org, there's a special w way of signing things. You have to have an atar ball, but you can't sign the atar ball. You actually have to decompress the atar ball. Or, like, so if it's a, um, compressed with um, XZ, you have to uncompress it, sign it, then compress it again, um, which I find is a little bit of a pain. Um, and then I upload, upload patches is the thing that does all the scripts to push it. And then I send out my email to all the kernel lists. That's just a stable release. Now what happens when um, I'm going to say, OK, uh, Sebastian's been doing a lot of work now, and um, I want to make a release candidate, because now I'm going to start pulling stuff from Sebastian's stuff um, that's up in the main, like 4.6 or 4.9 or 4.8 or whatever you guys are on. And I have another git. What happens is I have a 4.6 branch that has the last time I did a pull from uh, Sebastian. So I check out a temp directory that uh, copying the 4.6 uh, or Sebastian's or up the mainline uh, versions. Yep. OK. We want to get some discussion about how much they will do. OK, I'm almost done. No, OK, I'll try to be quicker. So OK, then, so I just want to go through this one. So um, let's see, I'll go click down. Yeah, because I merge in whatever. First thing I do is this is the script. This one is you know how I figure out your patches. I make a copy of, or, of what my, the previous pull. I uh, merge the, uh, the stable release that you're on. And then I do, um, what's it called, a cherry against your patches, which will show me all the patches that are not in mine that are in yours. Or that are, yeah, that are in your tree that are not mine. So that's how I figure out what, what commits. And then I have a, a script that actually breaks them into a quilt, makes them into a quilt queue. So then I go through and I'll say, I do all the quilt push, fix the conflicts. Um, I always, anytime I fix something, I always make sure I have a version, keep the version for that. Um, do the get quilt import, uh, make a next directory for it, push out the RT re uh, RC release. And uh, I have a make pre that does the, the, what's it called, the little prologue for you. <laughs> Now I go to quilt mail, I do the sign patches, upload the patches, everything else scan. And then finally, when, we're, when it's after he passes the RC release, uh, this time, oh, by the way, and then I do all the testing. I do the exact same testing that I do for the stable releases. Um, on mainline, I'll do uh, tag RT, uh, what's it called? You can see, push this branch, da, da, da. So basically, I almost do the same thing once I get everything else. Scripts, if you notice, the only difference is make RT uses two. If I put in uh, two versions, it finds out, uh, it determines, because uh, uh, it will say, oh, this is not a stable release. So I actually have to do a compare. So when you see the short log, so it does the short log information. And then to make the patches, it will also do the incremental patches that jump from one release to the next release. You forgot to mention when you read Facebook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, on this part, no, only on the K test ones. So uh, <laughs> I even have a cherry pick script here. So all these strings are up here, just to give you an idea. And then I have a script. Now, this is something I know people are, have, don't like what I do, because I have this script called remove old patches, because the RC release, I don't keep up there. I delete them. Once the RC releases are done, I delete them. I actually don't delete them at home. I actually move them into an older directory. So I have every single RC release that ever existed. So do you think that the RC releases should be, that should stay up there? I don't know if I want to keep the patches. Or make a git repo for the RC release? Yeah. So does anyone care about the RC releases? Someone say yes? <laughs> oh, there you go. He's hiding. So you want to keep the RC release? Someone told me that there's, um, um, there might be something for RC release to, um, for some spec or for some, you know, to prove history or something? I, I, I don't think if they have to be kept, but I think they're nice to be posted to the mailing list. He took a picture of me, so I have to take a picture of him. 
<laughs> Someone did up here too, but I, well, yeah. I, I mean, I'll maybe I'll just keep them and start. I mean, I could load all of them up too, but that that'll be part of discussion. So here, um, first off, uh, who here uses the stable releases? Okay, yeah, I got a couple hands. I almost should say, uh, who here uses RT? <laughs> Where people are just here, you know, a lot of people are just, just here to say, hey, I want to see what this RT thing is about. Uh, so I guess there's a few people who use that RT. I mean, um, I mean, okay, maybe I should do like the, uh, 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 let me go back to the very first slide, because I should probably say, uh, do the um, auctioneering. Okay, who here does, who uses 4.4? 4.4, do I hear 4.4? Yes, 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 how about 4.1? Um, Four ones, okay, okay. How about 318? Anyone 318? We're on three, no, we're not on 318, we're on 310. You're no, my personal no, no, I don't, I don't give a shit about your personal machine. <laughs> I said who uses it. <laughs> I should say who like really needs it. Well, 318, well, you, why, 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 why do you need 318? What? Need or do you just, do you install this, all of them? <laughs> so am I just, am I maintaining 318 just for you? So anyone on 318 besides just for personal? Oh, 318. Okay, we do have 318. 314's over, so it's over. Sorry, it's done. <laughs> 312. Anyone 312? So I can actually stop supporting 312 then. Assuming all your users are in this room, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I'd say 310, but that's us. That's, uh, 310 is Red Hat. Uh, so I definitely have to maintain that one. And 3.4 is over, and 3.2 I know is used by Debian. So, okay, I, I, no, I could still, 3.18 is supposed to be end of life in January, so I'll even just keep it up. I just want to give an idea of who still uses this, because I kind of, you know, it's a lot of time. It takes me at least two days to go through all these guys um, full time. I mean, I, I, it's about two days of work to get all these kernels done before I go out. And that's why sometimes I'm not always up there, because if I have other work to do, do, and it takes up two machines of mine to run all this, so I usually hold off until, I, I kick them off at a lot of settings off at night, but still. Um, uh, I think that was it for discussions. Yeah, uh, whoops. Ah. So is there anything more that should be done stable? Is that basically satisfy people for what I'm doing kind of for stable? I mean, uh, I'm hoping to get some more uh, CPU power from Thomas so I could get those all mod configs done in two minutes. Yep. Uh, and also, I, actually that'd be great. I'd love the all mod config and the um, cross compiles. Those two things I would love to have done and that would save a lot of time. I think trending would be valuable. What? what? Trending. So Tr you, you currently test for, do I get worse than 40 microseconds? Yeah. But we don't have any idea, for example, if it was 38, 39, uh, so, right? So we are integrating it into our smoke test form. So he get, can As part basically of the push. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he can basically push his release candidates into into our repository, and then we do the, the smoke test run and we okay. track it on the website. So that'd be good to integrate as part of the release right. process, right? Is you don't yeah. want to you, you don't yeah. want to see a trend that. <laughs> well, like I say, uh, we for take him yeah. away all the all the Facebook time. You know, the funny part is, <laughs> yeah, no, you are. You take away my well, Facebook time. We'll, and you take all these Plug in on the test site. And yeah. Facebook on the side. Yes. <laughs> but no, the, uh, actually, believe it or not, there's been more of a trend. Before, it was around 60. It's actually been getting better. Um, that, that would be good to know also. Yes. There we, <laughs> no, but it is true, because I remember I was actually shocked that I, I don't break 50 anymore. I mean, I was like, well, I, my runs, and they take, uh, they run, uh, some of them are like, because I want these runs, especially if I do it overnight. So that's like an eight hour, eight, nine hour run, and I at full load on the system, and the system's like an old box, okay? So it probably more deterministic though, <laughs> because it's older yeah, box. You, you get all the nice, you can get all the nice trending information then from. from yeah. Yeah. So uh, release candidates I only do when I pull from uh, Sebastian for stable releases. I just do the merge. I do yeah. my thing tough, and I just pull that out. Right. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you just shoot yeah. it in the packet and be done with it. Yeah, because the release candidates are where I could have pulled in the wrong patch, because sometimes uh, Sebastian says, no, 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 that doesn't go to stable. That's why I do that, because right. just, to, just to get the okay, yes, this should go to stable. But when I'm pulling from already stable, it's, it's already been done. Yeah. Okay. You, uh, yes? I guess it's a little odd that the, the tests that are being run on the, the stable release, which is you know, some of the official release, aren't the same as the ones that are in the RK, RK test. I guess there was some consolidation there. 
Well, we're working on that. Yeah. yeah. This was actually kind of last minute pulled. Uh, when the stables came out, we, there was no coordination on what we were doing. You know, Thomas just asked me, could you, just, could you create stables? I'm like, okay. And I said, well, what am I going to do to make sure my tables are actually working? So we're trying to be a little bit more professional now. <laughs> uh, yes? Uh, can you explain the difference? If I just took the mic. Wait, Mike, where's the mic? Uh, it's the oh. uh, You have to turn it on. Uh, oh. Bottom? Yeah. Oh, there's an on switch right there. Yeah, you found it. Yep. Yes? Uh, can you explain the difference if I just took uh, a stable uh, kernel um, from, from kernel.org and I took then the matching quilt series and played it on there, do I get something different than, than what's in the stable tree or what, what, what's if you, the difference? If you do, it's a bug. Because, oh, one thing I forgot to t show in my slides here. Um, after this, uh, because the, this, the, the patch quilt comes from uh, this, the cherry pick, this right here, the make tar ball release, the, that make tar ball, that's the patch quilt. Cool, that's going to be the quilt queue. And uh, before I do this, I do a git diff against the staple tree, it's against my git repo. So the only thing that actually, there should be no diff. So that's one thing. I would say git def and it comes up, they're equal. Um, if I, the, the commits are not the same, but the actual re end result is exactly the same. At least git tells me it is. So uh, it should, if, it's, um, if it is different, that's a bug. Um, so, and you gotta let me know and I gotta fix it. You don't, you don't have any fixes that, 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 that. Uh, you don't, you don't have, have any fixes that are related to the changes in the stable? What do you mean? If, if there was, uh, the, you know, the, there's a quilt patch queue, it comes out from Sebastian, and there it is. Yeah. And then there are changes made on the stable branches. Yeah. Do you ever fix things that break there? Do, do things break do, well, yeah. on, on the stable? In RT, do stable fixes? Yeah, well, if you mean, if he finds something that's broken? No, or, do you find things? That oh, that something is broken. Yes, I will. I will. In fact, actually, there's two patches that have to go into three two. So if it's something that's only specific for a stable, and it doesn't, go, usually I I like to wait if the fixes will go into um, um, mainline because I don't like to pull. I don't like to pull in stable fixes that are marked to go into Greg Hartman's or the stable tree, the mainline upstream. I'll wait until they have it up there and I'll pull that in. But there are sometimes that there's there's a couple of things that broke that were RT specific mm -hmm. within a stable tree. Those, if someone sends me a patch, I will pull it in. And that's usually, I usually add them to when I pull from uh, Sebastian. I'll add stable specific uh, changes as well. So if I just used the stable release plus Sebastian's patches, I will miss some of these changes. Uh, how that do you add be... his, how do you use a stable release plus his patches? That's, well, that's, that's, that was my... No, 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 I'm saying it, no. He's using, a, he's building his stuff and development stuff. Um, but I can I can download the patch queue for, for his a, for no, no, a particular no, no. stable release. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he only works on the development branch, yeah. and I work on all the other ones. So when he's done, when he moves to another development branch, I inherit what he was working on. Another question? Um, which actually point out something. That, shoot, I thought of something about that when you said about. Um, uh, fixes. I can't think of remember what it was. That was a little concern too. Um, oh, one thing is the patch queue in the queue uh, in my rebase. Um, if there's something that's back, I never like if I revert something, that becomes actually another patch. So if you ever look at the patches in stable, they always grow. They never get smaller. I don't fold. I don't merge things. I don't re like if a revert. Like if a patch is added that shouldn't have been, and it was released, there's gonna be a patch that undoes it. So that change, there'll be two changes in the, in the quilt queue that basically become a no-op. Um, so the rebases are, the, although it's still a rebase, I seldom ever merge anything. So I try to keep it, I, I think that's the most stable way of doing things. So sometimes if you look, if you try to figure out, oh, how many patches are on 4.4 or 4.3, because people ask me, oh, because they want to compare different um, 
uh, like how RT is doing, you can't look at my tree. You actually have to look at when, when Stable uh, had it because those changes will actually grow. So it get, it's actually the, the number of patches within the Stable trees are, always, are going to be actually bigger than when they originally were being worked on in the development branch. So don't go and say, oh, look how much it shrunk. By, from my, you have to actually look at when to know the actual times. I believe you did look, use your, you used your patch set when you, yeah. yeah. You didn't use what I was in mine. Used it. Yeah. I didn't use your stuff. Yeah, I, I, I noticed I that. I reduced it. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Sure. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.